The human nervous system is a complex network of cells that carry information to and from different parts of the body. It is divided into two main parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system, or CNS, is like the command center of our body. It consists of the brain and spinal cord, working together to control and coordinate every little thing we do. The first part of the central nervous system is the brain. Welcome to the incredible world of the human brain. Think of it as a super smart control center for your entire body. With a whopping 86 billion neurons, this amazing organ does everything from simple reflexes to super complex thinking. The brain can be broadly divided into several major regions each with its own set of structures and functions. These regions work in harmony, allowing us to perceive and interact with the world, regulate bodily functions, experience emotions, and engage in high-level cognitive activities. The human brain can be divided into three major regions. Forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. Welcome to the brain's VIP section, also known as the forebrain. Let's take a fun tour through its star players. First up, we've got the rock star of the forebrain, the cerebrum. Picture this. It's the largest part of the brain, with left and right hemispheres. Meet the cerebral cortex, the brain's VIP lounge for super smart thinking. The cerebrum has some killer functions. It's your personal joystick for moving around. It's like the brain's own movie theater, processing everything you see, hear, and feel. Think of it as the brain's library, helping you solve problems and remember cool stuff. The next stop on our VIP tour is the thalamus. Hanging out in the center, just above the brainstem, this is like the traffic cop for sensory signals, directing traffic and sending sensory signals to the right brain areas. It also acts as your brain's alarm clock, helping you stay alert and awake. Now, let's chill with the brain's best friend, the hypothalamus. Chill in below the thalamus. It's connected to the pituitary gland through the hip hypothalamic pituitary axis. It is like a remote control for functions like heart rate and digestion. It acts as the emotional compass for crucial functions such as survival instincts, regulation of hunger, and management of thirst, and also as your brain's thermostat, making sure you're not too hot or too cold. And now, let's dive into the emotional hotspot, the limbic system. Found beneath the cerebrum, it's where emotions take center stage. Key players and functions include emotional processing and memory formation. The amygdala, your brain's drama director, deals with emotions like fear and joy. The hippocampus, your memory maestro, helps you remember the good stuff. The midbrain is located between the forebrain and the hindbrain. It's situated near the brain's center, just above the brainstem connecting it to the spinal cord. The midbrain functions as a sensory integration hub, merging vision and hearing stimuli. In terms of motor coordination, it orchestrates voluntary movements. It also governs arousal, maintaining alertness, and rapidly filtering sensory information for swift responses. The hindbrain is the posterior part of the brain, located near the base of the skull and it comprises three main structures, the medulla oblongata, the pons, and the cerebellum. Our first stop is the medulla oblongata, nestled at the base of the brainstem. It's the unsung hero, regulating vital autonomic functions that keep us alive. Here, the medulla oversees the rhythm of our heartbeat, controls our breathing, and manages blood pressure. Its role is so crucial that it's rightly called the life support system of our body. Moving up, we encounter the pons, a bridge between the medulla and midbrain. 
This relay station facilitates communication between different brain regions, ensuring seamless transmission of signals. In collaboration with the medulla, the pons regulates our respiratory system and hosts nuclei for cranial nerves, influencing facial movements and sensation. Lastly, we reach the cerebellum, the master coordinator located at the back of the brain. It's like a maestro, orchestrating our movements and maintaining balance. The cerebellum excels at coordinating voluntary movements, ensuring our muscle tone is just right for smooth and precise activities. It even dabbles in cognitive functions like attention. Let's unravel the mysteries of the spinal cord, a vital conduit of communication in our body's nervous system. Picture this, a long, tubular bundle of nerves that journeys from the base of the brain down the spine. This is the spinal cord, a linchpin of our central nervous system. But it's not a solo act. The spinal cord is safeguarded by the sturdy vertebrae, the bony backbone of our body. Think of it as nature's armor, shielding this crucial neural highway. Enveloping the spinal cord is the spinal canal, a protective channel formed by openings in the vertebrae. But that's not all. Cerebrospinal fluid, a liquid buffer, circulates around the spinal cord, adding an extra layer of defense. Now, where does this spectacle unfold? Picture the spinal cord nestled within the spinal canal, gracefully descending from the brain through the upper reaches of the vertebral column. In adults, it usually wraps up its journey around the first or second lumbar vertebra, though, like any great story, there can be some variation. Let's have a look at its structure. At the center of the spinal cord, we find gray matter. It appears gray due to the abundance of nerve cell bodies and dendrites responsible for processing information. Surrounding the gray matter is the white matter, giving the spinal cord its whitish color. It's made up of myelinated nerve fibers forming tracts, facilitating communication between the brain and peripheral nerves. The dorsal horns, extending towards the back, house sensory nerve fibers carrying signals from peripheral nerves. On the other side, the ventral horns, projecting forward, contain motor nerve fibers responsible for transmitting signals to muscles and glands. Between the dorsal and ventral horns lies the intermediate zone. This area is involved in autonomic functions and the coordination of reflexes. The white matter includes ascending tracts carrying sensory information to the brain and descending tracts transmitting motor signals from the brain to muscles and glands. Spinal nerves emerge from the spinal cord, carrying both sensory and motor fibers. Dorsal roots contain sensory fibers, while ventral roots contain motor fibers. The main functions of the spinal cord include The spinal cord serves as a pathway for nerve signals traveling between the brain and the peripheral nervous system, which includes the nerves that control muscles and relay sensory information. Think of it as a high-speed information highway, transmitting signals that govern our movements and sensations. The spinal cord is also a maestro of reflexes. Ever touch something hot and immediately jerk your hand away? That's the spinal cord at work, orchestrating rapid, involuntary responses without waiting for the brain's input. Let's talk about sensations. The spinal cord is the conduit for sensory information, relaying data from your skin, muscles, and joints to the brain. On the flip side, it's the gateway for motor commands, executing the brain's orders to move muscles and carry out actions. Digging a bit deeper, the spinal cord plays a role in autonomic functions, those automatic processes like heartbeat and digestion. It's the silent conductor ensuring the rhythm of life keeps playing. In summary, 
The spinal cord is not just a bundle of nerves. It's a maestro, a messenger, and a guardian of our body's intricate symphony. It's the unsung hero behind every step, every sensation, and every reflex. Now, let's discuss the peripheral nervous system. If you've ever wondered about the intricate network that connects your brain and spinal cord to the rest of your body, you're in the right place. Let's get started. First things first, what exactly is the peripheral nervous system? Well, it's one of the two main divisions of the nervous system, working in harmony with the central nervous system. The peripheral nervous system consists of all the nerves and ganglia outside the brain and spinal cord. It can be further divided into the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Now, let's break it down. The somatic nervous system is all about voluntary control. It allows us to consciously move our skeletal muscles, performing everyday actions like walking, talking, and writing. Sensory and motor neurons are the key players in this system, transmitting signals between the body and the central nervous system. Moving on to the autonomic nervous system, it takes care of involuntary bodily functions. Forget about conscious effort. This system regulates processes like heart rate, digestion, and respiratory rate. Within the autonomic nervous system, we have the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions, which often have opposing effects on target organs. The sympathetic division prepares the body for fight or flight responses, while the parasympathetic division promotes rest and digest activities. Peripheral nerves are the messengers of the peripheral nervous system. Cranial nerves emerge from the brain, serving the head and neck, while spinal nerves, with their 31 pairs, come from the spinal cord, connecting the rest of the body. They play a vital role in transmitting both sensory and motor information. Don't forget about ganglia. These are clusters of neuron cell bodies outside the central nervous system. They house cell bodies associated with sensory neurons. But, what happens when things go awry? Conditions like peripheral neuropathy can affect the PNS, leading to symptoms like pain, numbness, and muscle weakness. If you want to learn about neuron structure, click the left video. For a better understanding of synapses, check out the right video. I'll see you there.